Establishing the Remagen Bridgehead. Vehicles in long line move up to the span named after General Ludendorff. Nazi plans called for demolition of this bridge between Remagen on the west bank and Erpel on the east. But on 7th March, 9th Armored Division patrols removed the charges before serious damage could be done, and we had a bridge intact over the Rhine. Tanks and infantry crossed to capture Erpel and surrounding high ground before pushing on inland. The bridge's railroad tracks have been planked over for vehicular traffic. Our ACAC opposes persistent enemy attempts to dive bomb the Ludendorff Bridge. Despite these attacks, the bridgehead rapidly expands. This marks the first breaching of the Rhine River line since Napoleon crossed in 1805. A convoy of patent equipment is ready to be unloaded for engineer battalions who begin construction despite the enemy raids. Normally a 34-hour job, the bridging operations are hours behind as Nazi fire flares up repeatedly. Under heavy enemy fire, combat engineers out on the incompleted span dash back to shore. Despite these attacks, the first Ponton Bridge is completed and handling heavy traffic on 14th March. Armor is raced across the new link as the Remagen Bridgehead begins expanding into a wide front. Nearly 400 Luftwaffe sorties were flown over Remagen, including missions by jet planes. The German planes soon encountered nearly 700 anti-aircraft guns, U.S. Army's densest concentration of World War II, under orders to shoot anything with wings. Each approaching enemy plane was said by one officer to cost the American taxpayers a million dollars in anti-aircraft ammunition. The gunners would claim more than a hundred aircraft shut down. The Luftwaffe began attacking the Remagen Bridge almost immediately with the worst few attacks on March 8th. First with Stuka dive bombers. The expectation was that the Stuka would offer the best hope of a pinpoint attack on the bridge, but when all Stukas were shut down on the first attack mission, it was obvious that another method was needed. German jet strike aircraft seemed a more survivable option since they could outrun Allied fighters and their speed might reduce their vulnerability to the growing anti-aircraft defenses the US Army was deploying around the bridge. At first Luftwaffe High Command asked for volunteers to fly a suicide mission against the bridge, diving their aircraft directly into the structure. Although there were volunteers, the idea was quickly scratched by senior officers who pointed out that the bomb's aiming system would prevent the bomb from detonating in these circumstances. The second day of Luftwaffe attacks began with an assortment of propeller-driven aircraft and the first jet attacks began later that day, including both the Messerschmitt ME-262 and Arado AR-234, which was Germany's first dedicated jet bomber. The jet attacks against Remagen on March 9th proved fruitless in part due to the intense anti-aircraft fire near the bridge from five U.S. Army anti-aircraft battalions. The danger of low-attitude attacks led to attempt by the Arado R-234 bombers to use the advanced blind bombing system on March 12th, but this was no more successful. This was the heaviest single day in air attacks 
involving some 91 aircraft, of which the US anti-aircraft units claimed 26 destroyed and 8 damaged. Jet strike against the bridge peaked on March the 13th with 19 Arado 234 sorties out of the 90 sorties flown by the Luftwaffe that day. US anti-aircraft units claimed 27 shot down and 9 damaged. It was also the worst day of the campaign for the Messerschmitt ME-262 fighter bombers, losing 5 aircraft to FLAC and Allied fighters. The scale of Luftwaffe attacks dropped dramatically in the next few days because of these losses. By March the 13th, the anti-aircraft defense reached its peak with 16 anti-aircraft gun batteries and 33 automatic weapons batteries for a total of 672 anti-aircraft weapons around the bridge. Remagen witnessed the densest concentration of US Army anti-aircraft fire anywhere during the war and it accomplished its mission. No German aircraft managed to hit the bridge in the 10 days of attack. Luftwaffe repeatedly attacked the Luftlandorf bridge with Messerschmitt 262s, though German records indicate that due to the bad weather no 262s flew on March the 14th. Through March the 17th the US Army estimated that the Luftwaffe had conducted about 400 sorties against the bridge of which 140 aircraft were claimed to have been shot down and 60 probably destroyed. German Air Force had lost 20 jet aircraft in combat, plus several more damaged aircraft crashing on landing, a total of about a third its original strength. At Himmler's urging, Hitler ordered that the bridgehead area be wiped out using V-2 missiles regardless of German civilian losses. A special launch battalion was armed with an improved version of the V-2 missile with a special radio guidance upgrade and launched 11 missiles from March the 11th to the 17th from bases in the Netherlands without scoring any hits. One missile came within a mile of the bridge, striking inside Remagen, assigned from one another hit within the town, the rest of the missiles exploded harmlessly in the river or open countryside. Another special weapon to appear was the Karl Super Heavy Mortar. Karl Battery C-638 with two of these massive weapons were sent to the Remagen area where some 14 rounds were fired starting on March the 16th. These did not hit the bridge, but caused considerable damage within the town of Remagen itself. Repairs on the Lundendorf bridge continued for 9 days, even as tactical bridges carried most of the traffic across the Rhine. Between air raids and enemy shelling, 200 welders, riggers, iron workers and carpenters swarmed over the structure. Measurements showed the Ludi settling a bit on the upstream side to the south, but engineers believed the structure had been stabilized. It had not. Just before 3 p.m. on Saturday, March the 17th, the entire bridge seemed to fold in on itself gracefully like an old slow-motion picture movie, before pitching into the Rhine with a white splash. Of those who rode the Ludi down, 28 died and another 63 were injured. A major's body was recognizable only by his Oak Leaf rank insignia. Others vanished into the Rhine forever. Precisely why the bridge collapsed would remain uncertain. Weakened by earlier Allied bombing and Span had since been assaulted by hard winds, heavy traffic, welding, hammering, V-2 missiles, artillery and the vibration of thousand shells fired from an army 8-inch howitzer battery less than a mile away. Most of us and old engineers said are glad that the damn thing is gone. 
By the 31st of March, three weeks after capturing the Lundendorf Bridge, all four American armies were across the Rhine River.